Ever since I read his profile on Wikipedia, <laughs> I decided that this man is my favorite South African of all time. And mind you, there are a lot of amazing South Africans. Of course, top of the list for many people, Nelson Holishasha Mandela. For certain races, there are amazing leaders like Winnie Matigizela, Mangaliso Sobuwe, Bantu Bigo, Chief Albert Lutuli, Oliver Reginald Tambo, John Langalbale Letube. Amazing South Africans. Young Smarts, uh, DF Malan, Paul Creer, Cecil John Rhodes, Jan van Riebeek. Amazing, amazing South Africans who did insanely amazing things. At times, there were people that were killed, exploited, oppressed in various ways. But if you look at the outcome of some of the atrocities, amazing structures that we get to enjoy today, have we've gone to progress. Today, we've got Elon Musk, absolutely sensational, what he's done in America, Tesla, PayPal, um, SpaceX, etc. Patrick Sunshion, Dr. Patrick Sunshion, the wealthiest doctor in the world. I think he lives in Los Angeles. Vivian Immerman, Sir Donald Gordon, uh, Eric Sampson, may he rest in peace. Um, Dick Enthoven, may he rest in peace. Amazing South Africans doing amazing work around the continent. I mean, not the continent, they're around the world. Of course, today we've got Trevor Noah, Black Coffee, etc. Amazing South Africans. This gentleman is my favorite South African of all time. And I understand a lot of people won't identify with him because of emotions of the period in which he thrived, which was the apartheid period. But I think the sooner, especially as black people, we can remove some of these emotions. We can learn so much. And we can take some of these learnings, use them as inspiration and as a blueprint and as a guiding map to build a first world amazing country and continent. This article was sent to me by a very good friend of mine, one of my best friends, Malcolm Nkunzmalana Mdagani. The article is from my broadband, mybroadband.co.za. Article released on the 22nd of December, 2022. Can go on Wikipedia and find his profile as well. The impressive South African that started ESCOM and ISCO. Hendrik van der Beyl is one of the greatest South Africans who contributed tremendously by starting ESCOM, ISCOR, and the Industrial Development Corporation, the IDC. Van der Beyl was born in Pretoria on the 23rd of November 1887 and matriculated from Boys High School in Franschhoek in 1904. He attended Stellenbosch University where he graduated with distinctions in physics, mathematics and chemistry. Van der Beyl left South Africa in 1908 to complete a PhD in physics in Germany. After completing his doctoral studies, he was appointed assistant in physics at the Koninklijk Sachsische Technische Hochschule in Dresden. Guessing that was in Germany. He later moved to New York, where he worked for Western Electric, which would become part of the Bell Telephone Company. In 1919, Van der Bell wrote a paper on scientific research and industrial development and related this to the development of secondary industries in South Africa. This paper caught the attention of Prime Minister Jan Smuts, who asked him to return to South Africa and become a scientific and industrial advisor in the Department of Mines and Industries. Van der Beyl took up Smuts' offer and enjoyed exceptional powers. He reported directly to Smuts. With the backing of Smuts, he founded the Electricity Supply Commission, ESCOM, in March 1923 to provide the country with electricity. Today, it is known as ESCOM. At inception, it was a non-profit public utility company with Van der Beyl as the chairman. There lies before the Electricity Supply Commission a great task and a great opportunity. It will be our endeavor to play our part, not as those who follow where others lead, but as pioneers, Van der Beyl said. We will foresee the needs of a country fast developing and by wise anticipation be ever ready to provide power without profit 
wherever it may be required. The project's success strengthened his vision of an industrialized South Africa, and he dedicated his time to this endeavor. Van der Beel saw that the two pillars on which industry would be built were adequate and economical supplies of electricity, the production of adequate and economical steel. With the Electricity Supply Growth, under the Electricity Supply Commission, he persuaded the government to create a second public utility company to produce steel. In 1925, he founded and headed a new company known as the Iron and Steel Corporation, ISCO, which, like the power utility, prospered under his leadership. He later saw the need to support smaller private enterprises and in 1940, he successfully lobbied the state to create the Industrial Development Corporation, the IDC. The IDC provided capital to promising entrepreneurs, or enterprises rather, and he served as chairman during the first three years. He also helped to make South Africa more self-sufficient and less reliant on imported goods during the Second World War. As Director General of War Supplies, Van der Beel mobilized South Africa's limited industrial resources to produce guns, bombs, armored cars, precision instruments, military explosives, and ammunition. Other industries like weaving, clothing, leatherware, and canned foods also received a boost. They developed rapidly to limit the country's dependence on imported supplies. Van der Beel's impact on South Africa is still felt 74 years after his death in 1948. ESCOM became one of the best power utilities in the world, and despite the destruction over the last two decades, it remains the largest power producer in South Africa. ESCO, which is now known as ArcelorMittal South Africa, is the largest steel producer in Sub-Saharan Africa. The IDC is still operational today and continues to promote economic growth and industrial development by funding high-impact projects. This article was first published by Daily Investor and is republished with permission by my broadband. Hendrik van der Beel. I've got a beautiful town named after him called Van der Beel Park in Gauteng. What I want to highlight, number one, visionary leadership. Minister Jan Smuts managed through advisors or other people to read the papers of this young, intelligent, innovative South African who went to study in Germany and go and work in New York. And he said, this guy is a bright spark and we need him. Brought him back home. Told him, you will report to me directly. Imagine a Cyril Ramaphosa, Jacob Zuma, Thabo Mbegi, Khalima Mutland and Nelson Mandela fetching the greatest of our talents. And Elon Musk fetching a Patrick Sun Xiong, fetching a Sia Kruza. Come home wherever you may be. Come to South Africa You'll report to me directly and let's industrialize and build a great South Africa. And he gave him the capacity to build. You don't understand why in this day and age, the African National Congress government has not built five more ESCOMs. Because of course, this ESCOM served a small minority during the apartheid regime. There was some power in the townships, but not that much. Why did the ANC not prioritize? Let us build industry. Let us build energy supply. ESCOM now looks to make money. This was not for profit because the apartheid government had a plan and a vision. They realized that we need to have cheap energy supply to industrialize this nation. We need cheap steel. Shout out to Lakshmi Mittal, Indian billionaire. I think he lives in London now. And I think his business is being run by his son. But Lakshmi Mittal built Mittal Steel and they came and they bought ESCO. Of course, they manufactured weapons as well. Something that we're also not prioritizing. If anything, we've lost Denel. Uh, Arms Corps, I think is the company Hendrik van der Beel set up. We've lost Denel, which manufactured weapons. We've lost South African Airways. South African Airways as a parastatal was meant to become the cheapest, a non-profit airline in South Africa so that all South Africans could travel around this country and the continent and do business. And from there, scale and say, now that we have this humongous airline, let us now get as many pilots as possible, black pilots, black female pilots, and then let's go into the manufacturing of our own airplanes. And let's go into the manufacturing of our own ships. Let's not import. If anything, the ANC government has 
allowed us to move backwards from what the apartheid government had envisioned. We had industry, we were manufacturing, we had textiles. All of those industries have been destroyed, and not only them, but even the educational institutions which teach the skills for these industries, destroyed. I was reading a Netcare, an article from Netcare saying, I think we have a shortage of 26,000 nurses. Nurses! Our government has destroyed nursing colleges. We have a backlog of all nurses. Never mind doctors, never mind engineers. All nurses. Come on, man. You start thinking maybe the ANC government was instructed to go and destroy. By who? Maybe by the apartheid government who are not happy. They were like, look, we'll give you guys power, but you must destroy. Or maybe America or Europe. No, if you guys want to have power, maybe the United Kingdom, Queen Elizabeth at the time, we will let you guys run the country, but you have to let us come and dominate your economy. It doesn't make sense. Imagine Elon Musk, given the privileges that Hendrik van der Beyl had. He would have built SpaceX here. We would be building rockets. He would have built Tesla here. We'd be manufacturing electric cars. We could have our own social media giant. If you look at what the, the Chinese Communist Party has done in creating or enabling, enabling is what's important, enabling entrepreneurs like Jack Ma to build Alibaba, to enable Tencent, to enable Huawei. Last I checked, I'm not sure, but... China is the largest manufacturer of electric cars in the world. And other industries, Shenzhen in China is the biggest um, soft hardware. Sorry, if Silicon Valley is king of software, Shenzhen is the king of hardware for technology around the world. Enabling South Korea, Samsung, Hyundai, Kia, an enabling environment, Japan, Suzuki, Toyota, Mitsubishi, Nissan, where is our enabling environment? Tata Mahindra in India. Where is our enabling environment? Adolf Hitler created an enabling environment in Germany. BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Adidas, Puma. Um, it's a Tommy Hilfiger. No, Hugo Boss, who manufactured the uniforms for the Nazi soldiers. Volkswagen, the biggest automobiles company in the world, commissioned. Adolf Hitler commissioned. Just as Jan Smart commissioned Hendrik van der Beyl, Adolf Hitler commissioned Ferdinand Porsche to build a car for the people, a people's wagon, a Volkswagen, a Volkswagen, the VW Beetle. Ferdinand Porsche would go on to build his own Porsche brand of luxury cars. An enabling environment. Aliko Dangote did not become the wealthiest African by mistake and the wealthiest black man by mistake. He comes from a lineage, four generations of the wealthiest man in Western Africa, from his maternal side, his mother's side, the Dantata family. The Dantata family, the wealthiest family in West Africa for four generations. One of the daughters married a prominent politician, Dangote, and they had a son, Aliko, Alhaji Aliko Dangote, who went to study business, came back, lived with his uncle. His uncle gave him a loan, taught him business. And he went and he said, I'm passionate, I'm hardworking, I can take the risks. And I'm part of this amazing family which has got political connections everywhere across Nigeria. And he built Damote Industries, the largest cement producer on the African continent and one of the largest in the North, Southern Hemisphere, if not the Northern Hemisphere. It's gone on to do sugar. It's gone on to do flour. He does noodles. He does other foods. He's created a, a tomato paste factory. He's now building the biggest oil refinery plant on the African continent. If you go on Google and you look at Damonte's cement plants across the African continent, they're huge. He's trying to infiltrate the South African cement market through Spaku cement because he tried to buy PPC and uh, AfriSam. But Putu Mantlego, who's a business ally of Sil Ramaphosa, they blocked that. But he's coming through through the back door because he's an industrialist, but he's part of an enabling environment where his family makes sure that he has all the money, all the needs. He's been an advisor to the last three presidents. And I can only imagine when you have that type of enabling environment, they also block some of the competition. Damote says things like, we cannot import basic things from outside there when we can do our own. They are industrializing Nigeria. He keeps saying Nigeria is Africa's or the world's biggest secret. He's not the only one. There are many visionaries around the world who are looking to empower their nations. Paul Kagame being one of them. He's open for business. 
If you want to do business with Rwanda, go and find Paul Kagame. He will let you do business as long as it's in the interest of the Rwandan people. That's visionary. Robert Mugabe would have wanted to do the same in Zimbabwe, but he was shut down, sanctioned, and the African continent didn't help him. Who is our visionary leadership? Patrice Mutipe's father, Augustine Mutipe, was a visionary. He was friends with big mining bosses, the Manals, the Hersoffs. Because of that, he got his family into mining, starting with his daughter, I think Bridget, got into mining, Macau mining. And then from there, his son, Patrice, got a good share with, when BEE was, was starting out, good share of mining from the Manel and Hersoff family, from Anglo Fall mining. He got a chunk. And today we've got African Rainbow Minerals and Patrice Mutsipa is a dollar billionaire. He's no Hendrik van der Peel. He hasn't built anything exciting. He's just been brilliant at mining and he's tried to invest. He's set up Time Bank. Um, he's got a share in Sunlam. He's tried to set up under industries. Now he's going to energy. And maybe the Cyrils and the Patrices of this world are hoping that this is what will make them billionaires, going into green energy, moving into the future. And they, maybe like Jan Smuts and Hendrik van der Peel, are hoping to be pioneers of alternative green energy. Saudi Arabia in the Middle East is the biggest investor in alternative energy. They've got the biggest solar farms. Even though they are oil rich, they are visionaries. Look at what's happened in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates. Donald Trump had a vision of saying, stop exporting jobs to China. Bring the jobs back home. Bring the jobs. Let's manufacture Apple. Let's manufacture Ford. Let's manufacture American products here at home. Nikes. That's vision. Now, you are not president of the country. You are not a big billionaire like Johann Rupert, Nikki Oppenheimer. You're not. My question to you is what is your vision for yourself? What is your vision for your children? What is your vision for your family? Do you have a 50 year plan, a 100 year plan? What is your family's plan on energy? Can you just go and study how electricity is made and begin manufacturing energy and electricity for your family? The guys in Orania with the leadership of Karl Bosov are doing it. You get emotional, of course. Afrikaans people, hey, I'm a poor, no. Hey. You're angry, but you're missing the whole fucking point. You're missing the point. Remove the emotions. Some of these people were racists. Some of these people oppressed and killed and exploited black people. Those are facts, hard facts. They shafted black people off their land. But if you are a true intelligent person, you can see beyond the Adolf Hitler um, massacre and genocide and be like, what are the good traits I can take from this person that I can implement in my own family, in my own community so that we can thrive and win? Angry English, angry Afrikaans as a language. How can I take the English language, the Afrikaans language and use it to further my family and my community into the future? How can I learn Mandarin? How can I learn Japanese? How can I collaborate with the Nigerians, with the Rwandans, with the Angolans? with the Tanzanians, shout out to the Doji family and Mohammed Doji. How do I collaborate with Indians in South Africa, with white people in South Africa, with Chinese people in South Africa, with colored people in South Africa, so that I can build for my family and for my community? What is your vision? What is your Hendrik van der Bell moment? Gaten McKenzie wrote a piece about be the Rockefeller of your family. J.D. Rockefeller was the wealthiest man of the time. He created Standard Oil. The Rothschilds family, which modernized and formalized banking with one father who had five sons, spread them across Europe and they formalized the banking systems that we have today. What is your Rothschild moment? What is your Rockefeller moment? You've got the Japanese dynasties, the South Korean families, Chinese billionaires today, European billionaires, a lot of them, of course. African billionaires today, of course. Muhammad al Amudi, who also worked with Saudi Arabia. You've got the Sawiri family, Mansur family, powerful families. You had the Dos Santos, politically connected. Uh, I think Eduard Dos Santos, the father, was a president. He enabled his daughter um, to become Isabel, Isabel Dos Santos. She was the wealthiest woman in, in Angola and in Portugal. Unfortunately, a rife with corruption. The family has been attacked ever since the father lost his power, etc. In the same way, a lot of people were removed from wealth when the new prince, I think, of Saudi Arabia came into power. These are the things we're meant to be studying unemotionally because we want to win. We need more Hendrik van der Bales. We need more Elon Musk's. We need more uh, Dr. Patrick Sun Xiong's. We need more Dr. Anton Rupert's. We need more Harry Oppenheimer's. 
We need more Cecil John Rhodes. We need more Alan Grace. We need more Donald Gordons. We need more and more of these industrial industrialists, people that are forward thinking. But we need a government that is enabling and that is a vision. We need people like Young Smuts. We need people like Mao Zedong, Xi Jinping, people like the monarchs in the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia, like some of the leaders in Europe, like some of the leaders in America who are forward thinking, who can identify the best talent and who can capacitate them, give them money, remove red tape, allow them to travel the world, acquiring skills and whatever the case may be, and come and build a first world country in South Africa and for you, in your family and in your community. It's a challenge to you. Shout out to Hendrik van der Peel, shout out to Jan Smuts, and shout out to every other entrepreneur, innovator, inventor out there who is looking to fight by whatever means necessary to build a better family, community, country, continent, and world for us all. Penuel the Black Pen. And in closing, shout out to Nikolai Tesla. Shout out to Thomas Edison. And shout out to Alexander Graham Bell and all the great innovators. Whether they stole their ideas or not, whether some of these ideas were from black people, Egyptians, some of the Greeks, some of the Chinese, and they were stolen. Shout out to the people who brought it to our attention and shout out to the people that they stole it from. Maybe one day their stories will be told as well. Shout out to people like Dr. Chris Barnard as an example. We have so many talented people. They need capacity. To all the engineers in South Africa, this is your time to shine. Go and build your own ESCOMs. Matila Koko is trying to build energy in Zimbabwe for the Zimbabwean government. Shout out to Emerson Nangagwa, the president there, who's got some type of a vision. We need more visionaries. Not for the country, for your family and for your community. Penuel the Black Pair. Dunking around.